On this episode, Christian impersonates a giant drunk bullfrog. Yeah. Yeah. But then we implement a screen that goes, Game over. And finally, we make some text blink. Kinda. It's, it's blinking. It's all right. It's blinking. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I am Christian. This is... Laziness Academy and welcome to uh, a new episode of um, our little schmuck tutorial. This is gonna be episode number nine and as you can see I had a little bit of haircut. Um, load nine, yes, yes, load schmuck. Uh, shop. Shmup. I think they cut the hair a bit too short. <laughs> Just cut into the brain a little bit. Yeah, hi. So today we are going to be um, doing a bit of a different thing. I have a very clear goal for this episode, which is a bit of a something from left field. Uh, something I want to do today is I want to have a start screen and maybe a game over screen, right? Two screens. Because when you right now when you run this, you see mm, we have a bit of problem. The game starts immediately, uh, and we are immediately in the game, and that's not how games work, right? That's you you know that when you launch a game. You know, old game on the Game Boy or even new game, you know, on Switch or something. You don't just immediately jump into the game. You first, you know, get maybe some developer logos and then you have the start screen when you have cre can create a new game or load, or, or load an older game, something like this. And then, you know, you click you through the menus and then you get into the game and then you play for a little bit and then maybe, you know, game, go, game over and there's gonna be a game over screen showing you, you know, how you did, maybe there's some kind of menus and then you know, maybe you're back in the main screen or something. Um, I want to implement this today and um, uh, in order to, to pull this off, we have to talk about so-called state machines. Um, now, the reason why I talk about all these things today because obviously there's things missing in our shrub, right? There's like, okay, well, there's no enemies and we're shooting, but it's just one shot. Like, we remember, this is kind of like the goal. We want to have multiple shots and enemies as well. But in order to do this, we need to learn new programming concepts. And we already did that last episode. And, you know, I kind of like don't want to have like new stuff end to end. So I wanted to like slot in an episode where it's like, today we're gonna um, talk about things that are more about, uh, that require from us skills that we already know. There's a second reason why I want to do this now. And that is that uh, it's kind of difficult to pull this off. It's, it's more difficult to pull this off later on when your program is very complex, like we, because we're gonna have to like restructure our entire thing. And if that thing is more complex, that requires a lot more effort and you get a lot more confused. Uh, usually I, when I work on my own program, that's the first thing I do. So today, so actually we're a bit overdue with this kind of stuff. Let me explain you uh, what I mean. So a sh um, state machine is kind of like a concept, uh, a kind of like programming or maybe uh, even like an engineering concept where you have a thing that works in a certain way and then there is kind of like a switch that uh, when you switch that switch, it does something completely different. It suddenly behaves in a completely different fashion. And you know, uh, that's the thing that I was talking about that where you have a start screen and then you press a button and then the game begins. That's a good example where the start screen is, you know, has certain, shows a certain thing on the screen and reacts in a certain way to the, to the button presses, but then put something switches and then you have the game, which comes, shows completely different things on the screen and the button, uh, buttons do completely different things and so forth. So this is something that we're going to do uh, today. Now, uh, the requirements to pull this off are actually not that difficult. Um, what Basically what we are going to do is we are going to do a variable, again a variable, uh, that will store a mode. That will, that will be the, our little switch, right? That will switch between different modes. And then we're going to have a, like a big old if statement. And depending on the if statement, you know, the update function, and the draw function will com do completely different things. Not so much the init function, because I already said the init function is something that you execute just once in your entire program. Uh, alas, but the update function and the draw function will do completely different things depending on uh, how the switch variable is set, okay? Right. So let's just start with this. Let's just, just start uh, restructuring. 
Something I will also do today, and that's that's you know I had that was a long time coming. Remember how how I created like um my, my little custom functions, and I even put them like in their own little tab. We're gonna do create a lot of custom functions today, uh, to kind of like think about how we structure our program. But for now, let me uh, do a little mode. Let, that's gonna be our variable. That's gonna be the variable called mode. That's going to be our switch that kind of like, depending on what the variable is set to, completely different things will happen in our program. And we're going to set it to game. This is going to be kind of like what we already have. We kind of want to have like this screen at first, right? And so here you can see our update function and it's gigantic. It's huge. It's huge. And so what something I want to do is I want to basically replace that entire function. I want to create a completely new function that does something completely different. I'm going to actually create a new tab and I'm going to uh, uh, let, let me let me select this function first. I'm going to select this function. Select the entire function and it's, you have to be really careful. You have to make sure that you find where the end is. If you haven't done your indentation, this cut can be difficult. But OK, I selected this entire fun uh, function. I'm going to go copy. I'm going to mash the button here. that creates a new tab and this is going to be our update tab. I'm going to call this our update tab. In this tab, we're going to have update functions because now we are about to have multiple update functions. And depending on which mode we are in, we're going to use one update function or another one. Okay. So I'm going to paste this function in, uh, but I'm not going to call it underscore update. I'm going to call it update, uh, update game and update underscore game. I'm going to rename this entire huge function. And now it's in this, this whole new tab. And I already explained this in previously, but all these tabs are not separate programs. They are all part of the same program. Okay. Right. And now I'm going to return to the tab number zero where we had our initial init and update function. And I'm just going to delete everything inside the update function because we already had a copy of that. Right. Now the update function is empty. I'm going to see what happens when we run this. Oh, nothing, nothing happens. That's good. <laughs> At least there's no bug, right? So basically nothing happens because we're not updating the game. Good. And so something we can do now is like you see uh, in tab number two, we have this update game function that has the contents of our previous update function. We're going to copy the name here. And then in our actual update function, we're just going to call this function for now, just to see what happens. Good. Now everything's moving again. Okay, so now we just basically took everything out of the update function and repackaged this into its own separate function. So our actual update function calls that function. It's kind of like a game of telephone that we're doing right now. But the reason we're doing this is because now we can have a separate, uh, we can have a huge if statement here. We're going to go if mode equals equals game then update game else if mode equals equals something else for example start then start screen all right this is this is some stuff that all we already had but i just want to like reiterate what we're doing so um we put like the string game in our mode variable and here in the update function, we're going to do like an if statement, if mode equals equals, very important. We're checking if this is exactly set to the string game. Uh, it's not just one equals, but double equals, uh, because we're comparing two values with each other. And if you ever do that, you have to use the double equal sign because single equals means we are assigning a value to a variable. Double equals is we're comparing two values. Okay. So if um, mode is set to game, then we're going to call our old update function that we just like export, you know, <laughs> exiled into, into tab two. But if that's not the case, else if we're going to check if maybe instead mode is equal to start, which is not, but if in case, if it was set to start and here we could plug in another update function. Okay. And we could continue this if statement further to get, get another mode. We're going to do that in a second, but uh, I just wanted to, to show you kind of like the structure that we want to set up here. Now, we have to do the same thing with the draw function as well, sadly, <laughs> but it's, it's true. The draw function is not as big 
I'm going to select this one. And again, I'm going to create a completely new tab, the tab number three. I'm going to call this uh, draw. I'm going to paste this function in here and I'm call this draw underscore underscore game. This new, this draw function that we had previously, now it's, it's called draw underscore game. And the previous draw function in tab number zero, again, I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to copy this if statement that we had here and I'm going to paste it in here. <clears throat> and again, the same the same question. Like if mode is set to game, then up then draw game, not update game, draw game because this is the draw function. And then if mode is set to start, that's going to be the start screen. Uh, in this case, we're going to show the start screen. Okay. So I'm going to run this, and nothing will change. It will look as like as if it's <laughs> our old game. But alas, here. Uh, the mode variable now controls uh, our, our, our actual program. So if we set this to start and we run this, black screen. We, with one variable, we can kind of switch off the entire game. We switch the game to a com completely different mode. Kind of like we putting a different gear in our car and then suddenly the car goes backwards. <laughs> Something like this. <laughs> or suddenly cars, actually we set it to neutral. The car no longer works. Okay, good. So how how does that help us? Well, now that we set the mode to start by default, something we can think about is, is what kind of update function and draw function we're going to have when the game is in this you know uh, start screen mode. Let's uh, deal with draw function first. So this is tab number three. This is where we have our different draw functions. Yes, there's going to be more, and we can go function draw. Uh, start. We're going to create a new function and I'm just going to paint some stuff on the screen. Uh, I'm going to give it a, a blue background, CLS1 maybe. Uh, I'm going to print uh, my other uh, some uh, shmup. Uh, we're going to put it, uh, I don't know, 30 pixels to the right and 40 pixels down. And we're going to give it color 12. That's going to be the blue color. <clears throat> uh, then it's good to have maybe some kind of button prompt. So we're going to press any key to start. Um, that's something we're going to put further down the screen, maybe 80. And we're going to have a different color. Let's put it, uh, let's just make it white. I just realized I'm making huge mistakes here. And if you noticed this before, you are a genius. <laughs> I did a uh, uh, quotation mark too much. And I even repeated that problem again here. Okay, so now we're drawing like these two texts on the screen. We're clearing the screen. We're drawing these texts on the screen. And that's going to be the drawing of our start uh, start, fun start start screen. That, that That's the, the draw function of our start screen. There we go. Uh, and we can immediately plug this in into our uh, uh, state machine draw function. We're going to go say draw start. And bam, this is the start screen. My awesome shmup, press any key to start. Press any key to start is a little bit too, 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 too far to the right. <laughs> and enter political, <laughs> input your political joke <laughs> here. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's go 35 on this one. I'm just like positioning things a little bit. What, what you know, checking out what feels right. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Cool. So now we want to have an update function to this. So when we press a button, uh, we actually get to the game. Because right now, pressing a button doesn't do anything. So we're gonna have a, a update start function. So again, we're going to go into this update tab. We're going to scroll past. I like to have the most important update functions and the most important uh, uh, draw functions. I want to have them usually on the top of each tab. So if I switch to that tab and scroll up, I will be there where I will be doing most of the work, which is the new functions. Um, the new uh, update function is something I, I add to the end of the tab. Uh, but just that's just me. You, as we said previously, the order of the functions and which order you define the functions doesn't really matter, because the order of execution of those functions is actually something that is defined uh, by Pico8 itself. 
Uh, of course, obviously, the order of things within the function really, really matters. <laughs> but you know that already. Uh, uh, so this is going to be the update. Update stuff. Right. Uh, and so here we want to just check if any button is pressed. Uh, obviously, any button to me doesn't involve the cursor keys. Um, so if uh, btn p, um, we already talked about how uh, BT, there's BTN and BTNP. BTN triggers on every frame in which a button is pressed and BTNP triggers only on the first frame. And usually for U, uh, UI kind of thing, for menus, you actually always want to use BTNP um, because otherwise if you press a button, then there's a possibility that you just, you know, very quickly go through the different menus and so forth. Not so much a, a situation here because here we're just looking for a button press. So actually it doesn't really matter here right now. But just like for the future, uh, usually in menus you want to use BTNP. Uh, if BTNP, then. So if we BTNP4, then. And now what happens now, right? We want to start a new game. Well, I mean, the most easiest thing here that we want to have is we want to use our variable switch and we want to set it to game. Nothing is happening. <laughs> something something was not good. Uh, I think the problem is we are not actually launching this one. Yeah, that's right. So here in update function, uh, when the mode is set to start, we're not actually doing anything. So we have to plug in our function update start. Oops. Uh, save this run. Yeah. All right. That's good. So now things are working as intended. Mwah. Good. Um, let us uh, let us work on on this kind of stuff a little bit. Let us work on this because something I don't like is how we just set the uh, mode to game and then leave everything as is. Something I like to do always in each of my games is to have a um, function that starts the game. I mean, starts a game. A function that, when executed, will like reset every variable in my game to kind of like the beginning state. So later on, when we go game over, I can call that function to reset everything as it's supposed to be at the beginning of the game, right? And most of that uh, we already do here in init function because that was uh, until now a useful way, useful place to do this. But now things have changed. Now we kind of want to maybe uh, again move this around a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to actually put it behind the update and draw. I'm going to here and in, in the first tab, I'm just going to do a new function called start game. And this function will reset the entire game. And here in the, in the update function, uh, where we set the mode to game, I'm going to actually replace this with our start game function. So here, when you press the button, we're going to start the game and that will call this function here in tab number zero. Now here, immediately we can set the mode to game. So we can like move to the mode switching to this function because, you know, when you start a, uh, a game, we kind of want to already automatically set the mode to game. And now something I want to do is I want to go through this init function and, and see which, which statements are things that reset the game. So ship position and speed, obviously things that are, because you know, if we, if we play the game and then maybe move the ship around and then die, right? And then we are in a corner of the screen. Then when you go to the uh, uh, game over screen, then to the main menu and you start a new game, you want to be reset to the center of the screen, obviously. So the position of the ship and also the movement speed of the ship is something I want to reset when a new game starts. Same for ship, ship sprite and flame sprite. Same for bullet stuff. Same for muzzle stuff. Same for score. Definitely same for lives. And here we define the stars. Actually, we're gonna take everything out. Everything. Everything we're gonna put in a start game, except the mode equals start variable, the little switch that switches between the different modes in our game. 
So we all of the variable definitions, we all put them in its own start game function. A huge function that resets all of the variables. Now you can see it still works because, you know, it launches into a version of the game that doesn't need all these, these variables. It just like prints a bunch of stuff on the screen. And now when we press a button, different button, ta-da, it resets the game. Now I wanted to show you that how um, how that resetting actually works. Uh, or I want to test the resetting. So I'm going to take the start game function. I'm going to go into the update tab. And here we're going to be checking um, when this is where we're shooting uh, with button five. I'm going to do an if statement. If btn p4 then. And I'm going to start the game during the game. What happened? Like, I'm going to map start game to one of our buttons during the game. Maybe you already have using the button for something, so you, you, know, you don't have to try this yourself. But uh, I'm going to save this and run this so I can see what happens when I uh, use this during the game. So I'm flying around and, and minding on my own business, maybe shooting some, some, some things. I'm going to press that button and it resets the game. You see, it resets me in the center and everything else is reset. That's good. We know that it works. <clears throat> okay, some, uh, let's do some clear up. Let's do some, some follow up stuff that, that uh, I saw popping up. Uh, in the update function, there is something that I want you to, in the update start function that we just wrote, I want, there's something I want to fix. And so I, we said press any button. But we're actually just looking for button four. We also want to check for button five, but we haven't actually discussed how that works. Because it's like, how do I check also for button five? I would, I mean, I could do a different if statement, but that's that's not good because we have now we have two if statements with the same result. So it would be nice maybe if we can combine them. And you can absolutely do that. I should have maybe shown this earlier. Um, but um, you can do statements like and B T. Uh, uh, well, in this case, it's or not and. You can have, have or and and. In this case, it's or B T N P five. So if you have or the word or inside the if statement, check. Um, that means that um, it kind of splits the the uh, trigger of the if statement. It kind of splits it in two things, and both of things or one of those two things have to be true in order to uh, the if statement to get executed. So now, either button four or button five has to be pressed in order to start the game. I could also, as you already saw, I could also change this to and. In this case, button four and button five would have to be pressed to start the game. Little difference there, right? Uh, so we're gonna keep this at or now, and I'm gonna, it's, a, it's kind of English language anyway, so. So now X starts the game and Y starts the game. Perfect. Let's set it to end. Can we, can we make it work with end? Yeah! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna set it to or, uh, because that's how this thing is supposed to work. Okay, so good so far. Let us expand our state machines because there's one thing that obviously I want to also do and that is uh, I want to have a game over screen. When you go game over, I want to be like and then you know you, you died, you know, and then when you press another button, then you get to the start screen and then from the start screen you go back to the game. Uh, so um, so there's going to be game over screen, right? Uh, so here in a draw function, I'm going to check for a new variable. Uh, for a new value of mode, and that is going to be over. We're just going to call it over. Then we're going to draw the function. We don't have that function yet, but I'm just going to already start it. Draw over, right? And then here in the update function, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to we're going to check if the game is over, and in this case, we are going to uh, go update over. Draw over and update over whenever mode is set to over, right? We have just introduced a new mode now. Um, all that is left to do is we're going to have to create those, the update functions for this mode. Uh, I always copy already existing things because I'm just paranoid of making a stupid typo and then chasing that typo for ages. Uh, so update over. 
Gabriel's this update function. Uh, what are we going to do when the game is over? I think we're just going to wait for a button press. We're going to wait for a button press. And then if the button press has been pressed, then we're going to go mode equals start. We're going to go to the start screen. That's something that happens when game when game over screen is shown. And then here in the draw start function, that's actually, I'm going to actually copy the contents of the start function. And then I'm going to copy this into the game over function. Uh, it's not going to be update over, but draw over, very important, draw over. This is the draw function for the game over screen. Uh, maybe the screen is going to be more dangerous, maybe it's going to be eight. It's, it's just, just a test, you know, it's just a test. And we're going to write game over. Right, um, and press any key to continue. Good. Now the problem is we have to actually go game over. <laughs> we we have no way to go game over, so we kind of have to maybe do a check if if we are game over. Uh, and we we don't really have a game where we can go game like we, we can't lose lives at this point So I'm gonna put this on an if statement uh, On a button press like we did before so we're gonna go if btn p4 That's basically uh, I'm routing right now an update game function an update function of our, of our game if btn p4 then mode equals over Just to see How things look if we go game over Okay, so here is now our, our game. We're flying to space. Everything is peachy, but oh no, we got hit by a bullet. Blah, 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 blah. Game over. Perfect. Um, I would maybe move game over a bit to the center and press any, any key to continue to the to the left. Let's do that. And also, I don't like the 12. That's a bad color for this. Let's put a, f a, a two color two here. I'm gonna move it over. Uh, 10 pixels and this is something I'm gonna move over, you know, just tweaking the layout a little bit This is gonna be up to you to make it, uh, you know, all pretty and beautiful The red is a bit too harsh, but we're gonna work on the, the beautifulness of this later on Right, uh, oh, moved it way too far to the left uh, Oh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm messing things up. I'm just checking out the spacing a little bit I'm just, you know, I just just make. Honestly, I don't want it it's to be completely, you know, unwatchable. Oh yeah, that's good. That's good. It's a good game over screen. Mm -hmm. We have now three different modes. We have split our game into three different modes: the mode game, start, and game over. And we kind of can switch already between them. Oh, by the way, we haven't even checked. Can you, when you go game over, can you press any key? Yes, you can press any key and to return to uh, the start screen. Everything works as expected. So now you can cycle through basically through the three different modes. Mm -hmm. Perfection. Uh, one last thing I want to discuss um, on this episode because it will set up set us up for the next episode. Uh, and it, you know, just like not doing anything stressful anymore. We're just gonna do something like very relaxing. What if we wanted maybe this this text that we have here? That would be great if that text was blinking. Can we make it so that it blinks, right? Is that something that we can pull off? And the thing is like, we don't we don't just have the blinking text here. We also have a blinking text here. So it would be nice if we had like something that we can reuse at different places. So um, uh, this is gonna be a good, good moment to introduce you to this idea that uh, functions have return, can return values. Uh, we're gonna write a little function and that is gonna be for blinking text and I'm gonna put that function uh, I don't know where I'm gonna put uh, maybe maybe tap and tap one is gonna be uh, uh, helpers I'm just gonna call it helpers or uh, it has tools <laughs> I just want to be vague enough uh, all right tab one is gonna be tools and I'm gonna put here a little function called blink Open close parentheses. Right. So uh, as I said, functions can return values, and we already seen seen these. I mean, this is uh, this button press thing. That's a function uh, that returns a value true or false depending on whether the button has been pressed. 
Uh, we've seen also the random function that also returns a random value. Uh, uh, so it's kind of like, uh, it's like a variable that is different every time <laughs> you look into it. Um, and that's basically what we're going to do here. We're going to have a little function called blink, and that's supposed to return a value that we can plug into a text drawing function or in the color of the text drawing function. So it will, uh, the text will blink. Um, the way to return a value from within a function is called return. Return. And I'm going to return just like seven. I'm just going to always return seven no matter what happens, right? Um, very important thing is that return is something that immediately quits the function. So whatever I have after return, it, it doesn't that doesn't get executed and actually yeah it will actually like it will will let you know that something's after return function and that doesn't get executed so yeah return is also a way to kind of like cancel or like terminate a function as well other than end uh it's it's sometimes it's useful anyway we're going to always return seven so we'll blink uh, our blink function will always return seven and we can now use this in our draw functions for example, draw start here. Uh, we are drawing this press any key to start at this position and this color. And instead of the color, I'm gonna put on blink, open close parentheses. I'm kind of like inserting a function in the way I previously inserted a variable. So kind of like using a function like a variable, but instead of like reaching into the variable and getting the stuff from the variable and plugging it into, uh, into a draw statement or a print statement, we kind of, Executing the function, the function returns something, and we're plugging that into the into the print statement. Uh, and in this case, it's just going to be seven all the time. I'm going to run this, and you can see it, nothing changes. It's 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 white. But now, if I go to our tools and return, let's say six, then it's a gray color, you know. And if I return five, it's it's oops, uh, it's it's a dark color. All right, so let's us try to animate this number. Let's just try to re return different things, um, different numbers, depending on you know which frame, as the frames progresses in different frames, uh, this function shall return a different number. This is very similar. This is very similar to this thing here. You know, you remember the flame where we had an animation going on? This is basically the same thing, except instead of the number of the sprite, we want to return the number of the color. Oh, maybe something I would like to do is maybe um, uh, return a sequence of, of colors. So it would be nice if it go from this to this to this, and then maybe be back down again. That would be interesting, okay? Let us do the easiest thing first, which, which is like this, this, and this. Like it just like cycles through from from this gray color to this white color. Let's do that first. And we, I'm, I'm not gonna, uh, reinvent the wheel here we did actually that that, that kind of stuff before um let's let's just create a new variable called blink t blink t it's going to be just like a little time and it goes up uh, it starts at zero and then here an update function <laughs> in update function uh, not inside the update game update start or update or but just like in the actual update function in the uh, update function that is in, independent of the mode we're just going to add one to blink t. Just going to add one to blink t. Right? And so we're going to have a variable that just counts up by one every single frame. Uh, and then here in this blink t function, we're going to do something like if blink t uh, is greater than, um, let's see, uh, let's go greater than Four, then uh, blink t equals zero, something like this. And then we're going to return blink t. For now, just blink t. Let's see how that works. It's, it's blinking. It's all right. It's blinking. It is. It is blinking the wrong numbers. It doesn't. It's, it is not not returning the right the right numbers because we want to to go from five, six, seven. Uh, but this will return you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then back to 0, right? Uh, we can actually print this on the screen to see the results. We're just going to draw start, print, blink. You can see blink is returning the value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
Uh, so we need to just like um, edit, edit, edit the, the if statement here a little bit to kind of like return the right kind of values that we want. So let's just say a blink, if blink t is greater than seven, that's the white color, right? Uh, then we're going to return it to a color number five. Something like this. That should be enough. F five, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, six, seven. Always, always cycling now between the color five and seven. Let's bring back the uh, draw function to kind of see how that looks. Okay, it's blinking. It's blinking. It's blinking very fast. It's blinking a bit too fast, maybe a bit a bit too extreme, and also it's it's blinking to white and then switching back for like it's not pulsating that we wanted to do. We want to, to maybe go like one two uh, like gray uh, dark, gray white, gray dark like like going like and not and not going to white and then from white to dark immediately back down. Um, so this is a actually good opportunity to actually start using a. a a table to kind of modify our, our animation to kind of like animate between the very specific values. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to create a local table, a local table, local. We already had that local variables and we, then we're going to call this anim animation or, or let's call this my anim or let's call this blink, uh, blink any, blink any. Or maybe Benim. <laughs> it's, it's a Benimation, blink animation. Um, we're going to create a, a, a table of, num of numbers. Five, six, seven, then down to six, and maybe down to five, something like this. So like a sequence of numbers that we want to go through. Okay. And then what we're going to return is we're going to return one of the numbers from this uh, from this list. We also want to make sure that the blink t is kind of like cycling through this list. So we're going to go blink t starts maybe at uh, at uh, uh, if if blink t reaches one two three four five if the fifth entry in in the list if it's greater than five then it returns down to one. So the blink t the variable blink t would start at well, actually, it should, probably should start at one. Blink T should start one. It will start at one, and then it will go two, three, four, five. If it's greater than five, it will return down to one. And these numbers will correspond to diff different entries from this list. So we can use this list to kind of like specify exactly what how the animation will play out. And all we need to do here in the return function in the in the return statement, we're gonna say blink anim square brackets blink t. Blink t will specify which entry um, the blink function will return. Okay, so let's let's run this. Oh, yeah, that's that's better flashing. It's a bit fast. It's a bit fast and there's different ways that we can slow this down. For example, something we can do is just double the numbers. Uh, so the six, six, seven, seven, six, six, Something like this. This doesn't work um, because here's this blink T it makes it so that it just, you know, it, it doesn't go through this entire list, just like up to the fifth, five, fifth entry. Something you can do here is just want to make sure that we're going to en enter the length of this list instead of five. So um, this uh, if statement will automatically adjust to the size of our animation, to the length of our list. Uh, hashtag uh, banim will just give you the re return the number of entries in this list. And yeah, we have a nice little blinking animation. Perfect. And now, for example, let's say you want to maybe you can now really modify this animation. You can maybe maybe I want to like hold on to the dark color to the color number five for a bunch of frames and then do like a little pulse, you know. really long let's 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 just do a really long hold just a whole bunch of fives see see what i mean see what i mean you can use now this table to control an animation and we're going to actually use this trick later on 
to maybe do uh, control animations of sprites as well. That's something you can do right now. We're kind of like using the fact that the animation sprite, uh, all the sprites are like in a row here. But as you can see, you can also, also use this to control animation and like widely pick sprites from the sprite sheet um, uh, in this way and control how long you maybe hold an individual frame in an anima animation. Uh, yeah. But generally the takeaway here actually was supposed to be that you can use a function and that function can return a value. That's something that you want, that I want to show how it looks internally, how it looks from within the function when a function returns a value. And so, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, using this blink function here in this, uh, this draw start statement. But can you also use this draw function here in the game over as well? See, game over. Uh, press uh, any key to continue in game over. Right, this is my, my start screen. This is the game over screen using the same function now in different situations, allowing us to have like this blinking text uh, in different places in the UI. Nice, nice, nice. Now to be fair, I'm gonna be really fair with you. I'm gonna be fair and square. Uh, we could have also used a variable for this, a global variable, <laughs> and that would have been maybe a bit smarter than the, uh, than the, the blink function here. Um, but, I kind of like the Blink function. I kind of like this, and we're gonna use uh, functions which return values a lot in the future uh, when we're gonna get to some more interesting things, but that's something that comes up later. For now, let us move over to the doggy zone. That's right. Mm-hmm. So one thing I wanted to do uh, today, I want to give you as a goal today, we have these three statements, game over, start screen, uh, game screen, no, the game mode, the start screen and the game over mode. Uh, I want you to add a new mode. Maybe, how about, and that's gonna be a bit of a challenge, how about we're gonna add a mode um, that is kind of like before the start screen, uh, uh, after the start screen, after somebody pressed the button in the start screen, but before the game begins. Something like a splash screen that shows, you know, like um, level one, you know, like a level one kind of screen that, that appears for, let's say, four seconds. For four seconds, you will get a label, you know, get ready, three, two, one, maybe like a code countdown something, and then the game begins. Uh, that would be, for example, an interesting mode to begin. That's uh, doggy quest number one. Doggy quest number two. Um, the start screen and the game over screen look a bit drab. It doesn't look really great. So what you can also do is just take a little break from you know, all the programming and all that stuff and just like focus a little bit maybe on making these screens look pretty. Here we just have a little bit of text. How about you know you can try to maybe um, draw a little logo, maybe like a little sprite and put that sprite on the screen. Um, something I like to do, like a challenge for my students <laughs> in, in programming courses is uh, maybe you'll do like a, some kind of pattern in the background. You know, you, you know, remember how we had the stars coming down. Maybe the stars are coming down already in the, sh in, in the intro and in the, in the start screen. Or maybe like a, a polka dot pattern, like a, you can use four next loops to make like a regular polka dot pattern. It's up to you. You kind of have to decide what you want to show in your start screen maybe like a logo of your company somewhere in the corner or something like this. Just make this start screen pretty. Just make the game over screen pretty. Just use this as a canvas to kind of like stretch a little bit your muscles and 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 do some, some visual stuff. Okay? Now this is the moment where I will do a shout out to my beautiful, beautiful coffee supporters. Yeah, oh man, the response to the video series has been overwhelming. So I wanted to give a shout out to all the wonderful people who joined the coffee in the month since the series began. So a warm welcome to ADG, Academy Pilot, Adrian Arias Palomo, Alex SR, Andrew, Arcade Stuff, Bork Puss, Brian Baldwin, Burion Davies, Carmelo Mitrungo, David, Dennis, Elferna, Ivan, Fale, Generations, Haiku Noodle, Heinrich, Jack X, Jan, JBat70, Johann Peitz, Joshua Dolman, Kixel Studio, Miguel Beriem, Phil, Revaluk, Scotty, Sean Manget, Squirf, Shaya, Tech, Tercoil, Tom Hall, Twister PT, Chemix, Kronos V2, GBG, Mario, Fox, and Pixel Jochen. 
And also, as always, the big shout outs to the growing regular Donut Plus crew, including James Washington, Ted Carter, BB Samurai, Andrew Edstrom, Blixton, Jer, Art Sturgeon, Angelo Dante, Maciek, Arya JP, Lost Deku, Bellorek, Pendletong, Groove MD, Lackmare, Creeper Speak, The Coxworth, Cheap Shot, One Eyed Rabbit, Mario Carballo, Kevin Thompson, Paul Shemchukovsky, Bretsky, Emperor Snow, Hnork, and all caps. And if you aren't a supporter yet, you can also support this channel on Coffee. One of the major perks is that you'll get access to new episodes of the series earlier. And there's also all sorts of other behind the scenes features. Check them out on coffee.com slash lazydevs. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And now we are moving on to the next object. So on the next episode, it's gonna be a huge episode. Because on the next episode, we are gonna be tackling the dreaded challenge of multiple bullets. See you next time, guys. Bye bye.